hands over to you. Please uh, take it on from here. Thank you. Thanks very much, Mette, and uh, a warm welcome to everyone, also on behalf of uh, Frans and myself. It's fantastic to see, actually, that so many of you are joining in this uh, first session uh, already of the Prime Education Academy seminar series. And uh, as Mette said, the aim of this series is to offer some cutting edge scholarly and practitioner insights on uh, responsible management education. And uh, as you may have read, uh, you're encouraged to ask questions to the speakers and, for instance, even challenge them by taking some uh, provocative stance towards their uh, ideas and uh, contentions, uh, for which indeed you uh, should use the, uh, the chat function. Um, we're happy to see that, um, uh, that we have been able to uh, attract several quality speakers for uh, this series, uh, including, for example, um, Derek Kelly and Jordan Rennick, uh, Dima Jamali, and I've seen Oliver, Oliver Lash, who's participating today as well. And uh, they will account for a diversity, interesting diversity of uh, RME perspectives uh, for sure. And today we welcome Jan, uh, Jan Beine, as our speaker uh, on the topic, uh, Developing Sustainable Mindsets experiences with implementing RME at Antwerp Management School. And to briefly introduce Jan, uh, since 2018, Jan has been a researcher and educator with the Sustainable Transformation Lab at Antwerp Management School. And in these positions, he has had a, a pivotal role in the development of the RME agenda within Antwerp Management School. So I'm pretty sure he has some valuable insights and experiences uh, to share today with you. Um, earlier, uh, previously, uh, Jan has uh, been a program manager at CIFAL Flanders, which is a United Nations training center in Flanders that aims to promote the UN Sustainable Development Goals, uh, among uh, other UN initiatives. Um, Jan holds uh, a master in social economic sciences, and uh, I should, should check an advanced master in diplomacy and international relations at the University of Antwerp. Uh, and currently, he is actually pursuing his uh, PhD at the University of Antwerp, which deals with uh, identifying and overcoming organizational challenges in implementing sustainability. Um, and above all, uh, I'd like to add that uh, Jan uh, is a very nice and uh, always good humored colleague, for sure. Um, as for the flow of the session, uh, Jan will start out with providing some context through a, a brief uh, slideshow. Uh, and after that, we will start a conversation with uh, Jan about his ideas and experiences in the field of RME. Um, and you'll be certainly uh, able to ask him some of the questions you might have, uh, which again, we kindly ask you to put in the chat, which Franz and I will monitor and uh, then we'll pass on some of uh, the questions. Uh, so uh, without further ado, Jan, please uh, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Lars. Thank you for the very nice introduction. Uh, I'm sharing uh, my slides. And uh, as uh, Lars pointed out, I will start with actually a very brief uh, introduction in Antwerp Management School, uh, who we are uh, uh, based in, uh, in Antwerp, Belgium. Here on this slide, you already see um, on the left side, actually the three mission pillars of the school, which is global perspective leading to ingenuity, self-awareness leading to cooperation and societal consciousness leading to sustainability. And AMS wants to, yeah, let's say, teach and, and um, experiment with global citizens, mastering the art of making decisions and leading people. So these three mission pillars will come back in what we call our uh, global leadership skills program to create sustainable mindsets at uh, the school. Um, we are a global school. Um, we have more than around 24,000 alumni from around 87 countries. Uh, that means also we are globally committed uh, through several um, network organizations, also part of uh, the prime uh, chapter France Benelux for a while now. Um, we have full-time masters, executive education and AMS partnerships worldwide. And uh, to give you a glance of uh, what we offer at the school, uh, you see it here, executive PhD, full-time masters, uh, that's for a one a whole academic year. Uh, we have masters in finance, uh, human resource management, innovation, entrepreneurship, supply chain management, etc. 
Um, we have the EMBA, then executive master programs, uh, executive programs, and then company specific programs. This is also, uh, let's say, um, fulfilled a little bit from the research and valorization team or department researchers that work together with uh, full time masters, uh, program managers, or executive program managers um, to really. Uh, look and design courses, um, tasks, etc. cetera. Um, this is also uh, very short. You see here the number of full-time master students from 2015-16 to 2019-20. Um, and also on the right side, the numbers of executive master students we have at our school. And uh, as you could see, one of the mission pillars of the school is um, societal consciousness leading to sustainability. And that's why we really want to, uh, what they say then, uh, walking the talk. Um, so we actually worked on our first sustainability report, sustainability progress report. Uh, we launched it um, this year, well, actually last year, and we won this year uh, the Belgian Sustainability uh, Awards for our first report. Uh, we're very glad, um, but actually this is uh, yeah, something that has just started for us. And with the sustainability reports, we aim to um, combine all the knowledge we have, uh, see where we can improve, but also set specific targets, indicators to measure our progress on sustainability. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but linked to that, we also started with and probably most of you know this, um, the positive impact rating uh, for business schools. And that's actually quite new rating. Um, and it's a rating when students rate the positive or also negative impact of business schools. Uh, very interesting also for us to engage our students in this. Uh, and I'm also going to talk about that a little bit later in this session. And I'm also happy to, to answer any questions on this. Um, but last year, the first year of the positive impact rating, we um, uh, were one of the transforming schools worldwide. Uh, and that had uh, quite an impact on how we are performing on sustainability, which goals we want to set also in the future. And it seemed that also for our students, but also for our staff, it gave a kind of a new vibe in how we want to tackle the sustainability topics within the school. So very important uh, to, to mention this. Um, also, one of the things that we did as a school in the last couple of months uh, and year is working on a stakeholder assessment, um, focusing first on an internal stakeholder assessment where we work together with our students um, and also our staff to um, design a materiality matrix for the school linked with three pillars. You can see it on the right side and also linked with the SDGs, the knowledge impact, the environmental impact, and the human impact. And then in the middle, you see partnerships. Uh, without partnerships, we cannot uh, reach these SDGs. We cannot reach our goals as well. And you see some material topics on the left side, from stakeholder engagement to economic inclusion, collaborations, sustainable projects, uh, CO2 footprint, etc. And we actually um, looked how we can uh, yeah, set specific targets towards these um, three pillars and also what our material SDGs are or material topics as well. And you can see here, uh, we designed together with our students uh, an SDG materiality matrix where you see uh, might be no surprise as G4 as one of our prior topics, quality education and lifelong learning, but also SDGs such as responsible consumption and production are quite high ranked, uh, as well as sustainable cities and communities, decent work, economic growth, climate action, uh, good health and well-being, etc. So the next step is really to look further in these uh, prior topics and prior SDGs and to design specific um, long-term strategic goals. We also did a materiality matrix uh, with these underlying topics. And there you could see, for example, that employee and student satisfaction are very high ranked together with uh, transparency, waste management, uh, and equality. 
So this is actually, uh, it was a good exercise to focus a little bit more on, on sustainability. Of course, Enter Management School is, a, is a, a business school that is operating for a while now on sustainability. It's also in our mission as, as said, but what are our next steps and what can we do to improve our positive impact and reduce our negative impact or potential negative impact in the future. So that's why we designed together with our students the sustainability report. We uh, engage them through the positive impact rating and we aim to tackle the topics and the SDGs that uh, we're focusing on here on these uh, last two slides. And then maybe to end this very brief intro, uh, one of the material topics is also on developing sustainable mindsets. Uh, and that's why we uh, designed a global leadership skills program. Uh, and we build upon the three mission pillars of AMS. Um, again, self-awareness, global perspective and societal consciousness. And um, I'm happy also to, to um, focus a little bit more in the rest of this session on uh, this program, uh, how we develop sustainable mindsets, how we learn uh, from um, the last couple of years uh, on this trajectory. So I'm happy to, to answer any questions on that. Um, and maybe also for you, um, we, can, we don't have to answer it right now, but we, are, we understand we are not there yet as a school. We really want to improve more and we know that we cannot do it alone. So that's why also through um, this network of Prime, through connecting with other business schools worldwide, it's always nice to learn from each other and to see how we uh, are getting the responsible management education agenda more uh, in our school. How can we adopt it? How can we implement, implement it within our organization? is a very important question we we ask our, ourselves uh, uh, daily in in what we do and and how we can do it and how we can work together on this so um, i'll stop for it for here and i'll give the word again to life and france um, to open also maybe a discussion and as said I'll, i'm happy to answer any questions related to the previous slides but also new questions on the program how we really develop sustainable mindsets Thank you, uh, Jan, uh, for that introduction. Um, maybe to, to be before we dive into that uh, Developing Sustainable Mindsets uh, program, um, could you tell us in what, in your view, responsible management education actually means? What does it mean to you, uh, responsible management education? Because those are three fancy words, but what do, you, what do they actually mean to you? That's a um, very, very good question, I, I guess. And, and for me, when, when I started at the uh, Antwerp Management School, um, for me, it was uh, a bird that I, I didn't know. Responsible management education. I, I heard about sustainability. I worked in the sustainability field. Um, but with responsible management education, um, I, I really believe it's about... Um, integrating sustainability, the mindset of sustainability at the one hand, but also um, new frameworks on sustainability on critical thinking about sustainability in, in everything what, what we do. So not only in programs, but also in, uh, in our operations, in our research, uh, et cetera. Um, and that, that's, I think, a very important thing that um, that I saw the last couple of years also developing, evolving in, in our school. Um, that's also an example. We don't have one master on sustainability. We really want to integrate sustainability in the heads of, of uh, students of finance, for example, or our executive PhDs. And that's what we mean, or what I feel that it's about responsible management education is really on how we best integrate sustainability in, in everything what we do. Okay. Um, and, and then if we, if we translate that into, um, into education itself, so into programs, uh, you say it's, it's, uh, there's not a specific program on sustainability, but it is, the topic is integrated in all programs. Um, and, 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 and you have a special uh, focus on uh, developing sustainable mindsets. Um, 
how do you do that? How do you actually develop sustainable mindsets in, in future leaders, in future professionals? What is involved with that? And, and what is it that, that Antwerp Management School engages in to, to make that work, to make that happen? Well, if I may, um, I, can, I can answer that question a, a little bit more broadly uh, with, with some slides. Yeah, um, go ahead. absolutely. That might be also helpful for, uh, for the audience to, to see what or what we do and how we, we want to do it. And um, I link it to five steps. It's always nice eh, if you can say we have 10 steps or we have five steps towards sustainable mindsets. It's not that these five steps are, are everything, but these are important steps to really create these sustainable mindsets. And um, a couple of years ago, we also tried to, to define sustainability intelligence or sustainable transformation. And um, Professor Visser also here um, can, can uh, describe it way better than I, I can. Um, about the how-to of integration, of, of sustainability integration. Uh, but you can see it here. And against this background, we, we also believe in the school that experiential learning is a very powerful approach for sustainable transformation and creating sustainable mindsets. So therefore, uh, we start in the very, very beginning now on the onboarding days to really look and see how uh, sustainability and the sustainability intelligence or sustainability literacy is within our students community. Uh, and from the onboarding days onwards, we uh, define several steps to really work on that to create uh, more sustainability intelligence and I quickly go through them. First step is yeah, get them thinking with new perspectives. And that's where we had actually several courses throughout the year. They look into uh, several um, frameworks, looking at the sustainable development goals, but also at the sustainable lifestyle goals, what you, what you can do as a person towards sustainability. Um, also towards other concept, concepts such as greenwashing and, and rainbow washing. We also want to let them learn about really the critical perspective as well towards the sustainable development goals and towards sustainability as a whole. And on the left side, you see the integrated value framework of uh, Professor Visser, which is really linked towards um, the five forces of breakdown, um, looking at yeah, our human system and how we are discontent, but also how we disconnect uh, where there is degradation, disparity or disruption and how we can really uh, brainstorm and look towards new innovation pathways, uh, satisfying pathways, smart, sustainable, shared and secure um, solutions towards sustainable uh, transformation or integrated value. So this is actually throughout the year, our students get courses. But with that, I mean, all the students, so the finance students, the supply chain students, the innovation entrepreneurship students, they all receive in uh, mixed groups these uh, new perspe perspectives. The second step, um, it has to be a little bit fun, of course, and they, uh, they get networked with peers during what we call GLS seminars, so global leadership skills seminars. On the left side, you see a picture of last year before the Corona crisis, where we had uh, uh, three full days where we really uh, dived into the three pillars of, of our school, self-awareness, global perspective, and societal consciousness. And on the right side, you see we, we needed to, to um, ensure some, some distance, so we worked with bubbles. Um, and we had actually a very good uh, seminar uh, in another setting, of course, but it worked very much. And there you, you see that it's also at the very beginning of the year, they get to know each other, they get to know themselves as well. They do a 360 perspective of who they are, what their strengths are, how they can work in a team. Um, as I said in the beginning, we have a very diverse uh, student group from all kinds of nationalities. So also the cultural differences, uh, how uh, they can show leadership and what leadership means for them, what sustainability leadership is for them, et cetera. 
So that's a second important pillar in, in how we want to develop sustainable mindsets. Third is, yeah, we want to let them get mission driven with action learning projects. This is actually also that they want, they have to start with at the beginning of the year. Uh, we actually mix them in groups and the groups are from several master programs um, and from several uh, nationalities. So they don't know each other and they have to come up with an idea to link with one or several SDGs. And they really have to work on a project uh, from uh, September, October onwards till February. In February, they have to do uh, a presentation what they did, uh, who um, they involved with, um, so which stakeholders did they look at, uh, how did they approach them, and a special um, third element is how did they create impact, and that's a, a very, um, how do you say it, a very important uh, aspect of, of the action learning projects. Um, it's not that they can like organize an event, that's good, but how can they really make impact and how can they measure their impact? And you see that um, it's, that's still a difficult point for, for a lot of, of student groups uh, to really measure the impact that they make with all kinds of projects. You see here um, several pictures of uh, past projects and I uh, had here also some examples of action learning projects uh, linked with all kinds of SDGs. Uh, creating awareness on, on food waste, for example, but also on um, arranging a public uh, campaign uh, on, on gender equality, for example. Um, we had several, several projects and I can discuss that uh, more during maybe the session uh, after I present these slides. A fourth uh, element first step is actually get practical with applied tools uh, via the GLS workbook. So um, a lot of faculty and program manager of uh, Answer Management School designed this global leadership skills workbook. Uh, also designed linked with the uh, three pillars and there are exercises, um, also self-awareness exercises linked with the SDGs, but also with other frameworks on sustainability and it's actually their book. So they can do whatever they want with it. It's not that we, in the end of the year, we say like, okay, now we want to see the book and what, what you do, what you did, what, what kind of exercises you, you, you worked on. It's actually their book. It's, you can say a, a book where they uh, can kind of scrabble what they want, but it's really to, to get them um, practical really with, with all kinds of tools uh, linked with these three mission pillars. And then last but not least, uh, throughout the year, they get really inspired by organizations, all kinds of organizations, um, multinationals, but also small organizations, uh, innovative uh, startups working on sustainability or trying to integrate sustainability. We have um, several sessions, but we also have an exchange day, a whole day where um, they can work together with companies uh, on a lot of sustainability challenges um, the companies face, but also uh, the students can ask very critical questions, uh, challenge the companies as well, and the other way around that uh, the companies challenge the students, uh, for example, on how they could tackle specific issues. And the issues can be very broad. Eh? It can be on, on specific content issues on sustainability, but also how we how, how organizations can, for example, create sustainable mindsets within their uh, operations and within their uh, team, for example. So always very interesting discussions on, on this. So these are actually five elements. I wanted to share it's a little bit um, a broader answer to your question, Franz, but these are really uh, some core elements that we see uh, linked with the Global Leadership Skill course linked with how we see uh, we, we can create sustainable mindsets. Yeah, thank you, Jan. Um, now, what I'm, what I'm really curious after, after hearing this is how does this now um, relate to the activities and, and, the, and the courses that students engage in in their, in their program 
um, because some of them are doing a supply chain management program, others are doing uh, a, a finance program. And, 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 and these are activities that they do on the site or do they also, let's say, translate into how do we, they engage in their uh, main program? Actually, it's, um, it's part of their program. So uh, every student also receives credits for um, the GLS program, as we call it. So six credits go through, through this. Um, so it's not on a sites track or something like that. And that's also quite new. It's only the past two years that it's really um, incorporated in their uh, whole curriculum. And that's also a message that, that, uh, that we receive from, from students. Uh, some say like, whoa, it's very surprising. I'm doing a master in finance and I need to do this. Why, why is that in the beginning of the year? Uh, but also other students say like, wow, this is, this is actually cool. I didn't expect this, um, but it's, it's very nice that, that we can do something like that and collaborate with other students on a sustainability topic. Um, so that's why actually, yeah, we see that there are several perspectives and several ways how, how students think about this. Um, but uh, every student, when you're a supply chain student, for example, uh, they need to think about how they link sustainability with their specific topics within their course. And that's what, what the aim is. It's not that um, they have to know everything about the SDGs, for example. It's, it's about how a finance student or a supply chain student can think critically about their way of, of, of business, about uh, what they learn in the, their courses and, and think about that uh, in a critical perspective towards sustainability as well. And, and how does that um, then impact, uh, for instance, uh, professors, lecturers, teachers, researchers involved in teaching those, those other parts of the finance master program or the supply chain master program? Um, because I, I, I would imagine that by, by taking students um, on this journey, it changes their perspective as well on some of the other topics that are taught and, and some of the other projects that they engage in. Um, maybe the first question there is, was, were, were all your colleagues enthusiastic about doing this? Did you, did you, did you get applause when you suggested this or was there some resistance in the beginning? And then the second um, question would be, why were they not that enthusiastic, Jan? <laughs> yeah, very good question. Um, let, me, let me answer it by, by going back a little bit. Uh, we started the GLS course not by saying, okay, from September onwards, it's a course of six points, six credits, and you have to do this and this and this. Actually, we started very slowly with what we called two at that day, uh, four or five years ago now, the SDG ambassadorship program. So that was a voluntary program and students could do uh, voluntary projects on one or more SDGs, uh, but they, they didn't have to, uh, let's say, disturb or push their professors or in, in any way. Now, and we can see it really with uh, the aim of the action learning projects, they become, or some groups really become small activists um, groups where they really push ourselves in the beginning of the year. We also say like, we challenge you to come up with new bright ideas to, to have our campus more sustainable. Um, our our, our recycle, recycle cups, is that, is that the best solution on sustainability or not? And they really take that seriously. And that sometimes uh, goes against our management team or our marketing team who says like come on they're there again those small activists and they they push our, ourselves to to become better um, and you can see that there are sometimes there is a struggle but what we try to do now is um, for every student group who does an action learning project they receive one mentor one mentor of AMS staff and this is actually to link the students with staff and to link the whole context of uh, what we're doing uh, with, um, with actually uh, yeah, the, the closer connection also with staff and students. 
and you can see that it's 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 getting better also to to um, to yeah to say like it's not it's not a struggle anymore not not as the first year that we really see this but again to answer your question also Franz it's and and less it's um it's our aim a sustainability team or sustainable transformation lab to yeah to to get our professors and our faculty out of their comfort zone and if our students uh, ask a question to their finance professor or or innovation professor saying like yeah but i don't think that's a good solution i think this solution which is maybe more or less sustainability uh, minded could be better well that's good i think that that is the eventual aim to 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 get we call it sustainable mindset but also sometimes critical mindsets uh, towards that that perspective so so does that mean that you consider yourself a, a researcher a, a lecturer or an activist, Jan? The three. Can I do that? <laughs> okay. All of the above. Yeah. 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 It's it's actually we we just recently had uh, the jury last week of the action learning projects, and again we had a discussion huh, about that every year uh, students challenges um, different staff um, of of the school. Even uh, you saw it on, on the materiality matrix, health and well-being is a very important topic uh, in the materiality matrix. Um, so students uh, really challenge uh, the school and our HR department on this question. Um, and I think it's a good, good thing that students themselves challenge our, ourselves. But then you see that HR or marketing says like, yeah, it's a little bit sensitive and we cannot do it everything what they say and it costs a little bit of money and this and that. Um, another example is of a tote bag. Every year AMS gives a tote bag, which is, uh, you could say, a very sustainable solution. But in the beginning of the year, all these students get receive like tens of these tote bags in several events. And one tote bag, I don't have to explain it, it it's also a sustainable cost. So the, the students actually go to our marketing teams and say like, we have a better solution to recycle our, our genes that we have for a tote bag like that um, or another solution or whatever. And then, yeah, they have to challenge, of course, a marketing team and the marketing team challenges the students like, okay, why not? We can design it uh, together, but it doesn't have, yeah, it cannot be a cost more than let's say uh, 10 euros per bag or something. So their first proposal was, okay, we can design a recycle, recyclable bag with our genes. It will cost 12 euros. Marketing team says, no, we cannot do that. And then they challenge the students again to search for another solution. And eventually now we're going to design recyclable bags with uh, a cost of four euros per bag. So this is one of the examples um, that, uh, that we see more and more often, which I think is good. And in that sense, um, I try to be a little bit of an activist, but also a lecturer and also a researcher. Okay. Now, this one thing that, um, um, that, that keeps popping up in my mind is, um, you say you, you, with this program, you develop sustainable mindsets. Um, and, and you give a lot of examples of how that then translates into the behavior of students um, and how they challenge staff and, and, and marketing and management and lecturers. Uh, but they also get credits for this program. Um, is, are these credits based on, on some kind of assessment in the end or a test in the end or an assignment? Uh, and the reason that I'm asking is that I'm, I'm actually curious how can you assess a mindset or how can you measure a mindset and, and what is better or worse than another type of mindset in that sense? And this question relates, by the way, to one of the questions that has been put in the chat. That's why I'm uh, asking it last time. Exactly, time. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you have kind of a standardized measure of, sust of sustainability mindset, Radha Sharma asks? And it, I mean, if, if, if that's even possible, Mm -hmm. Again, very good questions, uh, Franz and Lars. Um, yeah, yeah, good questions with I, all of the audience. I, I noticed, I noticed. Um, 
Let me also answer this in, in two ways. Um, we thought about how we can measure the impact that we have on sustainable mindsets. Uh, we still experiment with that. I'm going to answer that question later. First, how we, uh, in the end, assess students on this is uh, a combination of, of uh, several um, grades that we give. First, um, first half, and it's linked with their action learning project, is that they need to design a team charter. The team charter is um, a whole document where they really fill in uh, who they are, what their team is, uh, what they see about sustainability leadership, um, what kind of topic and project they want to achieve, what their plan is um, towards that, what their timeline is, etc. So all kind of details. And that's to get them going. And it's also, uh, we see, um, they're often very disappointed about their grade that they, that they receive on that at the beginning of the year, uh, because it's not that it's, it's all bad, but you could see they need an extra push to, to for example, uh, to look into how, how will you measure the impact you'll, you'll have on, on your project and um, what kind of impact you're aiming for and who are the stakeholders you want to involve, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the first step, uh, an assessment. It's, I think, 10%. The bigger percentage is um, a presentation they have to do. So last week they had to do a presentation, every group, and the presentation lasts uh, an hour in the sense that it's around 20 minutes uh, presentation and then 40 minutes Q&A, also from the jury. And the jury asks questions on self-awareness, on global perspective and on societal consciousness. It's not only about the sustainability aspect, but we need to see that they learned how um, they think about the global perspectives, how they uh, evolved as a team, what um, they did to overcome obstacles. This year, of course, due to Corona, there were some obstacles on, on several projects. Um, and what they learned from, from themselves. And you could see that actually all the groups um, have their own trajectory, their own route, their own way, how they dealt with their project. Uh, and for the jury, it's, it's then um, uh, through Q&A, we, uh, we can assess them as well. And then a the last point is that they have to assess themselves. Um, so it's kind of a peer review where they can assess their teammates. Um, and we don't, it, it's also around 10% or something, but it's really up to them. So eventually if you have a team of five, six people, um, you can work very good together and can design the roles uh, and there is maybe one leader or there's shared leadership. Um, it depends from group to group. Uh, but in the end, they have to also review and, 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 and assess themselves a little bit. So these are three main pillars to, to assess it. Of course, in the end, is it an assessment that they really are or create a sustainable mindset for themselves? Uh, we ask that question always. Um, and we actually design also a survey every year. Uh, and we're experimenting with doing that survey at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year. Uh, also looking towards um, how this uh, year at AMS, how the GLS course changed you, your habits, um, your routines, uh, how it changed your worldview, your environmental worldview, uh, and these kinds of questions. So it's a whole list of questions they receive. And in that sense, we also try to measure every year our impact. Um, in that sense. We also experiment a little bit with the SUDI test as well in the beginning and at the end of the year to really assess their knowledge. Uh, but we could see that maybe a lot of students, um, when they do the assessment, really Google uh, the answers. So it's not, the, I think in that sense, not the best test to really measure the impact we have uh, on, on the GLS course. Um, but we are further experimenting and we're very much open to collaborate with other schools on how we really can measure our impact as well and to improve our impact uh, towards the students uh, creating sustainable mindsets.
So, but um, measuring the impact you had on the students, that would express a great for you as educators. Um, I'm just curious to 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 know, and I'm also curious to see uh, comments by others in the in the chat, maybe that whether it's even important whether you express um, the development of a student in a grade at the end of the year, uh, given what you're trying to do here, a grade seems so irrelevant. Yeah, I, I, I agree uh, in, on the one hand, and on the other hand, it's, it's good that it is, um, you could see that when we had the voluntary projects, the SDG ambassadorship program four or five years ago, and there were no grades, yeah, students were not very motivated to say. Uh, some are, but not, not all. Now, they all have to do that, and there are credits, so you can see that it, when it's now a mandatory part of their program, uh, you can see they're motivated to, to really get the best rates. Um, is that the best way? Maybe not. Um, that's why we also, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, we, we uh, started to do the positive impact rating. Um, and in that sense, we also receive a lot of qualitative feedback. And we also notice some um, new insights that students have but also for us as a school to improve. Um, maybe just to point out, there are several questions that positive impact rating says or, or put forward. Uh, the first question is, what is the most important thing your school should stop doing in support of its commitment to providing management education uh, for sustainability? Uh, and there are several answers. Uh, one answer is um, uh, stop using single use items related to the campus management packaging. Uh, but also another one is uh, pushing or forcing the agenda too hard um, through, through the whole project. Uh, another one is... Um, Hello, Kirsten. Yeah, Jeff. Hido is, is uh, Hido. interrupting the... <laughs> Can you maybe uh, mute your microphone? Uh, yeah, please? yeah, yeah. I think the host should do that. Yeah, perhaps. No, he I can do that. I can do that. Well, yeah. Uh, could you do that, Sophia? Guido, could you mute your microphone, please? Obviously, Guido is busy. Maybe um, I, I'll continue. Yeah. In between the the well, words of Guido. Well, well, actually, uh, I'm, I'm 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 curious because there's a suggestion in the in the chat here, a uh, link to this topic here, mm -hmm. um, and I'm I'm curious to hear whether um, AMS would be open to experimenting with this. Uh, it's a suggestion that if the assessment is so closely based uh, to the student learning journal uh, journey, then why not simply let the student determine pass or fail based on a self assessment instead of uh, a Q and A with a panel. Very good question. And uh, also there, I agree partly. Um, that's why we're experimenting with the three angles of, of assessment. One is peer review that they have to assess themselves, uh, but also a part is uh, through a jury. Um, so yeah, I, uh, is that a question also linked with the positive impact rating or is it then really linked with the, with the assessment? I think, I think it's linked really with the assessment. The assessment. Yeah, I also see the suggestion about a, a personal development portfolio, for instance, uh, as, as a means to uh... actually the, the peer assessment is is part of the personal development um, uh, project that I have to do a project. It's also so I, I mentioned the team charter. That's one part as a team, but all, all students need to do a personal development plan uh, and link to that. Um, they have to do then also the peer review. The personal development plan is not assessed at this moment or at this stage, but it might be an opportunity in the future to, to look at that uh, as well, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if, if you now look at where you are right now uh, with, with introducing responsible management education at, at AMS, uh, Jan, um, if you could share with, with everyone here the, the, the three main lessons that you have learned so far when it comes to 
overcoming barriers or trying to get support or making it work in, in, in real life. Um, what would those three key lessons be for you, uh, Jan? Um, first would be um, involve students and staff as much as possible. It's not um, uh, the, the faculty involved in the GLS staff alone who can create this. Uh, we have to do it uh, all together. And I think it's, it's a very classical uh, point of view, but I, I really mean that. And we also experiment with that in the sense of what I, I call the AMS mentors. They're linked with the groups, that's one. But also when it comes to integrating sustainability in the knowledge, human and environmental impact of the school, so also in the campus management, is uh, that we create sustainability champions. And we really want to um, highlight that it's, it's, a, it's a part of, of everyone. So every, every person um, need to do that. Um, second, um, keep on challenging ourselves. And that's what I mean with um, uh, also what I, what I highlighted, uh, challenges uh, from the students towards faculty and the other way around. Uh, so that's a second important one. And the third one is yeah, measuring the impact. So the impact that was actually our last question you, you raised the impact towards the students, creating more sustainable mindsets, but also the impact for us. And that's still a difficult point. Uh, we're exper experimenting with measuring our impact with these surveys, et cetera. But it's, we believe it's still a working point. We really want to measure our impact um, in a very yeah, deep sense. Um, and we're also looking at how can we, for example, in, in five years, also looking back at students who are now doing the GLS course, where are they in five years and what are they doing? And did they really do something with the year at AMS uh, related to sustainable mindsets or not? So it's now a little bit too soon to do that, but I believe that's a very powerful way to, to, to uh, look ahead. So those are the three maybe lessons uh, we see that, that are important. Okay, thank you. Um, Jan, maybe... Jan, can I ask a question? Yes. Hello, definitely. can you hear? Yeah. You mentioned the, the, the reaction from students going from very enthusiastic to a little surprised, but what about the reaction of uh, employers? which are also significant stakeholders. Do they value this part of your curriculum in their hiring practices? You mean the, the future employers of, of the students where they want to work or where they're going to work afterwards? Yes. Yes. Um, uh, I think, uh, yes, in the sense that uh, we have, um, besides the chair of uh, Lies and Friends on management education for sustainability, you have the chair on sustainable transformation, where uh, Professor Visser is chairholder. And we work very closely together with a lot of organizations. For example, you have um, Randstad Belgium, you have the Port of Antwerp, BISF, um, Johnson & Johnson. And they're really looking at us as a school, uh, mentioning, uh, guys, we need sustainable mindsets in the future. Uh, for example, BASF says, if we want to uh, attract new people, uh, young people working for us, um, they actually uh, desire that these young people also challenge um, the, the company and the organizations towards new sustainability uh, aspects. Um, so in that sense, we receive these questions also from the organizations that we work with. So they expect also uh, from us, from a school like Antwerp Management School to really uh, dive into this topic and to create these sustainable mindsets uh, for eventually when they uh, work for an organization or they uh, create their, their own startup. A lot of our students do that as well, especially in the master uh, innovation entrepreneurship. 
uh, have that mindset. So it's it's definitely a, a question we receive from organizations that we work with. Okay, if, thanks. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, for the so, question. Uh, well, yeah. So my reaction here is that uh, I, I mean, you sort of buried the lead because if there is a demand driven from the job market, that should be what should incentivize the students for their employability instead of uh, gamif gamifying or uh, allowing uh, allocating credits. That I think that's the way you should uh, uh, communicate to 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 uh, get uh, the students who are still. Uh, on the fence to, to get on board. I, I mean, it's just a, a reaction here. I would have put that in, in the presentation if I had uh, been in your shoes today. Yes, thanks, Mike. Um, I, I really, uh, I agree with what you say. Huh? And, and I think it's definitely a point to, um, to take with me or take with us uh, in the future as well. But Jan. Um, now we're nearing the end of uh, of our hour here. So, um, and I, I think in the in the chat um, there's a, there's a very nice final question that I would like to ask you. Actually, um, we've talked about developing sustainable mindsets uh, for a while now, and all the implications and the and and and, and uh, the hurdles that you have to take to implement a program devoted to that and so on. But in the end, how would you describe a, a sustainable mindset? What is it? Um, good question, but a very hard question, I guess. Um, and with the experience we have at, at Enter Management School uh, and with the experience we had uh, by designing the whole GLS course, um, for me, sustainable mindsets or creating a sustainable mindset is really uh, having um, a combination of how can you be more self-aware? Uh, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? How can you show a global perspective? What are the cultural differences? How can I work together with a, within a team, uh, tackle specific uh, topics? Um, also create more emotional intelligence, which I think is a very important part of sustainability mindsets. And then uh, last part is um, societal consciousness, uh, leading them to sustainability uh, awareness um, by uh, looking at new frameworks, uh, be also critical towards existing sustainability frameworks, etc. So really the three pillars to say that we try to, to look at at, uh, at Enter Management School. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I think with that, we have uh, we have come to the uh, to the end of this session, and I uh, I would first of all really like to thank you, uh, Jan, for sharing your uh, your insights and, and answering our questions. Um, and I would like to thank everybody here for participating. I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, as uh, as uh, Mette indicated at the start of this session, this is the first of four uh, sessions in this series. And the second session uh, will be on March 30, uh, where we will, uh, Lars and I will talk to uh, Dara Kelly and Jordan Rennick from Simon Fraser University uh, on the topic, and I hope you like this one, uh, the world we want, uh, decolonizing the business school and implications for responsible management education. So uh, we hope that we uh, will see many of you and a lot of other people uh, then and uh, thank you for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot also for inviting me and looking forward to get connected with, with all of you um, to, uh, to get this more uh, continued. Thanks, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone.